Hello and welcome back to Red Hat Summit and Ansible Fest, day three. Really bringing it home here, we're talking a lot about ecosystem and how we bring things together and how Red Hat is really delivering with their partnerships and bringing all kinds of new things to market. I'm joined by Bob Liberté, I'm Rob Streche, and Bob, I, I think a lot of things have changed, but what we've seen is that hybrid cloud seems to be a common theme, and it's been a theme that's been woven in between all the AI this week. <laughs> it's been woven throughout. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think obviously a lot of organizations, especially over the last several years, five to seven years, have really started making that shift to get into the cloud, but they've realized that it's, especially when they modernize and go to cloud native, that that doesn't necessarily mean public cloud only. So they've got the opportunity to leverage the technology to deploy in their own data centers, their own private data centers on premises, as well as extend that to one or more public clouds as well. Yes, and I, I think that's a great kickoff point to welcome in our two guests here, and uh, you know, welcoming back Stephanie Chiris, who's, you know, again, been on, you, you were on the, the front end and at the tail end. Yeah. So you're, you're one of the <laughs> bookends. bookends for this. And, and uh, Arparna Sharma, who's the huh? cloud transformation leader at IBM. IBM Consulting in, in particular. Hello. <laughs> Hello, and welcome on board. And I, I got to say, uh, we, we all did a really good job of color coordinating today. You guys are on <laughs> brand. Bob and I have the lavender on. I, I think this has been one of those things that, you know, it, it, it brings joy at the end of the week <laughs> and does. brings it home. So, but I, I, I think what I wanted to kind of get a better idea for is, you know, tell us a, a little bit about IBM Consulting, how, it's really helping organizations in this journey and the transformation, especially with hybrid cloud and now Gen AI. No, oh, uh, awesome. This is a very exciting time. So IBM Consulting clients look to us to solve their hardest problems. Complex architecture, modernization, migration, virtualization, building out hybrid cloud and hybrid cloud by design, right? So you talked about it a little bit, uh, hybrid cloud. Public cloud, private cloud, multi-cloud, on-prem. Clients need a strategy and an architecture for all of it to work seamlessly. And that's what we're helping our clients with, right? And it's been very, very exciting. And now with Gen AI, enterprises can't scale Gen AI without getting hybrid cloud right. And why that is is, so you do a POC. Right, you're doing a proof of concept. You have one application, you have one LLM, you have one hyperscaler. But then, you know, now you have multiple applications, multiple LLMs, voice models, image models, and then you have multiple clouds. How do you get it right? Unless you design it right. Yeah. And so it's very important to get hybrid cloud right to scale your Gen AI. Yeah, I, I think that, that, that to me is really key. I think it, it, the complications of it is just, it's so much, so many different plat to getting to that, what Bob was saying, that cloud operating model as well, so. Yeah. Ab yeah. I think, I think, you know, when I think about the collaboration that we have, as Aparna said, IBM Consulting and that team is so focused on helping customers navigate complex, right, challenges and opportunities that they face, both in the short term but also in the long term, which I think is something we've been very focused on in hybrid cloud. And really doing that with confidence and with scale, I think one of the things that's exciting with how we work together is um, we work with IBM and our partnership kind of at the front end with things like um, Red Hat Ansible Lightspeed, right, which of course uses IBM Watson X code assistant, pulls all of that together. We do that on the front end, kind of in the technology side, but then a partner and the team are able to then use that with customers to take that into scale and build that confidence in, in those deployments. And it really takes an ecosystem, right? And when you think about all of these problems that we are solving for our customers, I think Delta was talking about it a day before here, right? And they were on this uh, complex transformation journey. So we would leverage Red Hat technology and our relationships with some of our other partners, in this case, AWS, but in other cases, Microsoft or Salesforce or Adobe or, and, um, and the, the question is, how do you leverage all of this technology, right. use our expertise to drive outcomes for our customers? Yeah, absolutely, I think that's, um, 
I think the ecosystem approach is a great way to go because it, it absolutely takes an ecosystem these days. Um, one of the other things I wanted to touch upon, I noticed sitting through a lot of the keynotes, there was this thing that kept coming up, uh, AI, mentioned <laughs> once or twice this week. And um, wanted to get your, both of your take on how does AI, but more specifically, how does an open approach to AI show up when you're working with your partners, with your clients as well? Yeah, I, I mean, one, just to touch in on the technology side for a bit, super excited about the announcement IBM Research did around making open the granite models, right? And that then we use, because we are so committed to open source, we then pull that into our RHEL AI announcement where we leverage, of course, RHEL for the enterprise Linux side with now the open granite models, right, that have Apache licenses, so that's great all open source. And then you pull in Instruct Lab. This open space, right, which as you look at AI, it's going, to, it's going so fast with the innovation, but we know nothing drives innovation faster than this feedback loop of community engagement. So that was a big piece, big exciting piece of our announcements and done with IBM Research. Yeah, I, I, th I think again, it, it's, it's, it's so exciting to see that. And it, yeah, absolutely. I mean, seeing the, the my, my big take on that with what you were doing with Instruct Lab and the Podman and so forth yeah. was really democratizing AI and enabling it to go from the ultra scale models in the cloud to the enterprise and be able to deploy it on a workstation and be able to make absolutely. changes and iterate and fine tune models and, and help with bringing in data. So I thought that was a, I think that was a great approach to engage all the users there saying, okay, this isn't just about something I can't see or touch, it's something I can have right in front of me and work on in my own environment. I think one thing that's exciting from an ecosystem view is um, it is built so that partners and, and customers can take their expertise. So Aparna and the team at IBM Consulting can take Instruct Lab, tailor a model with all of the expertise that you have, industry verticals, past engagements, and then deliver that to a customer in a model. Absolutely. Yeah. No, open is essential, right? Open is important for innovation, open is important for collaboration, but more importantly, it's bringing the best of the technologies to solve the hardest problems, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, AI Word has been mentioned a few times, right? Uh, but again, to get it right, you need, you need to think about, do you have a consistent, consistent platform? Right. Do you have a consistent strategy for your data? Do you have data access figured out? Do you have data governance figured out? And you need to do that by design. So again, if you do your hybrid by design right, you get Gen AI right. Yeah, I, and I think that to me is one of the, yeah. the big keys and key takeaways is that, it, it, again, as Bob was saying, that it takes an entire ecosystem to make this all you know, hum together. It's not one, not one company is going to go and solve it. In fact, we were talking about that in, in the reference of security earlier today, and I, I think that's the other thing that IBM Consulting also brings, right, is that you've been there, done that, and not only that, I mean, like you're saying, Instruct Lab was actually a research paper that was put out by IBM Research and then turns into a product and you know, Matt was on here and he was geeking out about it. It was like <laughs> 10, 10 weeks to, from research paper to product. Oh, it's a huge, I think it's a huge deal because um, if you were, you, you were taking a model, tuning it on your laptop, but now you have the ability to be able to post it in the main branch and now everybody else can collaborate and build on top of it. So I think this is just going to accelerate uh, innovation further. Agreed. So, so Stephanie, what are, what are kind of the top three considerations for enterprises when they're looking to, because hybrid cloud's been around for a bit now yeah. and, and you guys have been, you're in all the hyperscalers and been around for that and I think now people are looking to update those strategies. What are some of the key considerations they should be thinking about? So I think the, the timing right now is super exciting. As you said, we've been on this hybrid cloud mantra and journey for a long time. We've built the portfolio in order to support it. It's really built to bring that flexibility jointly with the ecosystem. Um, a couple of things I would say about the timing right now is, as Aparna mentioned, AI is a ultimate workload for hybrid cloud because it follows the data, you got to train models, you got to inference models, it is going to be a hybrid story. That is critical. I think also as we've seen the 
evolution of, of cloud in general, we're seeing much more intentionality around how applications or workloads are deployed across hybrid cloud. You take those two things together, we're starting to see a ton of, quite honestly, the right questions being asked so that customers can tailor it to their needs. And I think that's one th key thing about hybrid is, every customer is different, they have a different on-prem data strategy, they have a different public cloud, could be multi-cloud. I think it, we, our goal is to build the flexibility so that a customer can decide what's important to them for their business, for their workloads, and I think one of the key things is choose your technology for the challenges or opportunities you have today and set the foundation for the future. This is, this is a long-term decision that you're making, and if you do it right from the beginning, there's huge possibility going forward because we know, right, this is, we're all in this business because it moves fast, which yes. makes it great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that to me is really what does make it great is the fact that it is a journey. And, and I, a journey. I think there's, as things are evolving, I mean, you have now OpenShift Vert and all these different yes. technologies that are being brought to bear. And I, I think that to me is, you know, people need to be able to figure out how to go on that journey and they need help with that as well. Well, absolutely, and that's what we do, right, uh, from an IBM consulting standpoint. So, you know, hybrid, hybrid is here, hybrid is real, right? But in the last few years, or a few years back, uh, it was by default, right? People ended up there, yeah. but they weren't making strategic, conscious choices, and now they have an opportunity to intentionally design that. So as Stephanie was saying, if you think about the workloads, if you think about the applications, no two applications are the same, no two workloads are the same. So what's the right strategy? What goes where? What's fit for purpose? And if organizations are able to do that, then they're able to drive much higher ROI, right? Um, and, um, and I think there have been a lot of lessons learned as part of that. We have a maturity framework. We can take a customer from a level one to level five and yeah. everything that that, you know, that entails, uh, but there have been a lot of lessons. Start with the business outcomes. Make your choices. Yeah. Design for business growth. Then make the technology choices. Get your architecture right, yeah. right? So there have been a lot of lessons across, you know, so many customers that we work with. Got it, yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and the interesting part of what you were talking about is the, the journey that everyone's on, and not everyone is in the same place. Right, you, said, you mentioned starting the maturity point mall, starting point, or where they are, so you have to adapt to that. But I'm wondering, from all your experience working with these clients over the years at different points, are there any best practices that you might recommend? You know, I heard some of the customers talking about even like starting with culture first, or you know, just getting started, but I'm wondering if you can maybe share a few best practices for the users that are out there watching and saying, okay, what should I be doing? How should I get started? Yeah, absolutely. So. I think, um, I'll quote a few examples, right? So Delta, when they started, they started this journey um, during pandemic, and they said, okay, the planes are down, everything is shut down, and we're going to use this opportunity to reinvent ourselves. And they said, okay, if at 680 planes, you have to have a very different experience and a free Wi-Fi, and you've got to do it with resilience, how are you going to do that? Right? So a very different experience. If you think about US Open, Wimbledon, yeah. Masters, right? And uh, I think we were seeing the, the ping pong <laughs> earlier, right? Yeah. It's all about how do you drive fan experience, yeah. right? Um, and I mean, Wimbledon alone, 130 million documents, right? And then providing those live insights to, uh, to their consumers. Or Bank of Galicia, right? They, they had a customer onboarding time of several days, now they can do it in minutes, right? So I think first things first in terms of lessons, start with the business outcomes. What business outcomes do you want to drive? Second, drive the right architecture. And then number three, think about your developer community, right? Drive productivity. If you're talking about 10,000 developers in an organization, even if we can bring 20% uh, productivity through automation, through Gen AI, think about how far that goes. Right? Yeah. No, I, I, I think that, you know, I mean, we, we've been around the block <laughs> with this hybrid cloud, and <laughs> yeah. I think to that point, I, I think everybody's looking at how they can get to AI, and I think there's 
they see all of the pieces, and this is why I thought, I, I, yeah. I feel like I'm Chris Morgan's biggest fan about, but, that, but the, when they put that demo together, and yeah. from Podman and Instruct Lab all the way to OpenShift AI, those, those, that's a great roadmap from uh, that, but to your point, and I, um, I could see that IBM, because you touch so many, IBM Consulting that is, touches so many different customers, you even brought it up that even in the same industry, the application may not be the same how people use their data or how they want to use their data. And that's their competitive advantage and they got to retain that, right? So if cloud has been an enabler, if cloud has been an equalizer, Gen AI is the differentiator, is the accelerator. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I love that, that that's, a, that's a, great, a, great, a great tagline for that, <laughs> so. But I, I want to say uh, thank you for coming on board. I, I think, again, this has been great to learn more about IBM Consulting and what they're doing with Red Hat, and I, I think, again, that partnership and what you're bringing to that is fantastic. And, awesome. And maybe, maybe uh, I'll you know, go over there and you can beat me at, at ping pong because- <laughs> Yeah, I, let's I, do it. And then I can get the snarky uh, Watson X generated uh, <laughs> wrap up, so we'll, we'll do that after. But, let's do it. But thank you right. for coming on board. Thank you. Pleasure to be thank here, you. thank you. And, and thank you for watching theCUBE here live from Red Hat Summit and Ansible Fest, day three. Stay tuned, we got one more little wrap up coming up, but we're going strong and we're in the lavender. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'm Rob Streche and Bob. <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs>